it's good to put to to put to a close this half a day of reflection by gathering around the table of the Lord, the table of God's word and his Eucharistic presence. The gospel for today ends with Jesus' words to Peter, follow me, follow me. At the beginning of our reflection this morning, we said Jesus entered the room where the disciples were hiding for fear of the Jews. And he told them, as the Father has sent me, I'm also sending you. Get out of this room. Go out. But how do we go out? What is the disposition? Follow Jesus. We don't go out to go shopping. <clears throat> Pagkatapos kaya dito, pag sinabing go, saan kayo pupunta? Bad. <laughs> Depende. If you go out as followers of Christ, that's one matter. But if you go out to pursue your own agenda, that's another matter. So it is good. We started the reflection with Jesus sending us. But he closes the reflection by sending us as disciples, as those who follow him. Oh, hindi basta aalis, pupunta kung saan, aalis bilang mga tagasunod ni Jesus. That makes a lot of difference. Jesus forms His disciples through His apparitions to, to them. The apparition of the risen Lord is a long process of formation of disciples, preparing them to mission, preparing them for mission. In the gospel, we have three stages of preparation for discipleship and eventually for mission. The first, the disciples went out fishing. Remember, these are experts. Mga expertong mangingisda. But that night, they caught nothing. Expertise is good, but not sufficient. Kung minsan nga, yung mga experts ang walang alam. Kaya sinasabi ko sa mga experts, go see and touch wounds. So yung iba lang ang alam nila, numbers, statistics. And then may degree, MA, PhD, di 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 di. Wala namang nangyayari kahit expert. Yan, katulad ni na Pedro, mga experts, wala namang huli. But Jesus taught them said, cast your net off to the starboard and you will find something. It's good that the disciples followed him. And there they realized who should direct the catch. Yes, we need to strive to be knowledgeable. But we need that reserve of humility. To be taught. Kasi kung minsan, kapag expert na, akala natin, wala na tayong matututunan, wala nang pwedeng magturo, gumabay sa atin. Lalo na kung ang tingin natin ang nagtuturo, parang wala namang alam. For all we know, we will be taught more lessons by those whom we do not fully recognize. 
and they had a miraculous catch of fish. The beloved disciple recognized right away, who is this stranger directing them? And he acclaimed, it is the Lord. When you have experiences of not being able to achieve anything, parang kahit ang dami nyo nang ginawa, wala pa rin kayong nahuhuli. Baka oras na na tumahimik sandali at magpaturo, magpagabay kay Jesus at sa mga strangers. Yung parang hindi mo inaasahan magtuturo sa iyo. Kaya yung mga takot na takot sa strangers, takot na takot sa mga migrants, refugees, the poor, baka ito yung mga magpapalago ng inyong buhay. Ituloy ko lang yung kwento ko doon sa ano. After reminding them that their people also became refugees elsewhere. Pagka higup ko ng kape, pagkababa ko, sabi ko, you know, there are many Filipinos also migrating to other parts of the world. And I tell you, they contribute to the growth of the countries that have accepted them. They are not liabilities. They contribute to the growth of that community. Kung nagsim, nagmisa nga ako kako sa isang simbahan in Europe for Filipinos, 20,000 Filipinos attended that mass. 20,000. Sabi nung pare, your eminence, look at the future of the church in Europe. Sabi ko, I'm sorry, hindi lang future, present na. Ngayon pa lang, nagko-contribute na. No? The risen Lord looked like a stranger. But do we have the humility to be taught, to be guided, by these people. The second episode, after the miraculous catch, Jesus invited them to breakfast. <laughs> Naghanda na si Jesus. When they landed, they saw a charcoal fire with the, with the fish laid on it and some bread. Look at this. Jesus prepares a meal. But even if there was already a fish laid on the grill, Jesus tells them, bring some of the fish you just caught. Here is another lesson in discipleship. Jesus takes the initiative. Jesus prepares a meal, an encounter, a moment of grace and blessing for us. Jesus always prepares for us. Hindi lang natin nakikita yung pinahanda niya kasi minsan yung inihanda niya ayaw natin. O yung mga ilang dalaga dito, baka inihanda ni Jesus para sa inyo, religious life, belo, Habit, eh pero ayaw yan, ayaw ninyo yan. Kaya sayang ang hinahanda ni Jesus. Mga magulang, inihanda ng anak ni, ng, ni Jesus para sa anak nyo. Binigyan siya ng talents, ganyan. Tapos gusto ng anak nyo maging ganito. Sasabihin ninyo, oh, wag yan. Hindi kakikita dyan. Sabi ng anak nyo, gusto ko maging violinist. Anong kikitain mo dyan? 
Gusto ko maging painter. Anong kikitain mo dyan? Ayan, ang plano ninyo, kita. Ang plano ng Diyos, let this child contribute to a sense of beauty, of nobility to the world. Pero ayaw ninyo ng plano ng Diyos kasi ang gusto ninyo, kita, kita, kita. Ano? Nakita ninyo. Pinag-aral ninyo ng ganyan, wala, ineffective, ayaw din niya. Kasi yung mga pinahanda ng Diyos, ayaw nating kainin. Jesus prepares the breakfast for us. But He also tells us to bring some of the fish that we have caught. So we have to do our share. Kung meron ka rin lang naman bibit-bitin, bit-bitin mo para maging ganap ang plano ng Diyos. Reciprocity. A disciple trusts in God's plan, but a disciple does her or his share. Yan. Dalawa na ho. And the third, Jesus asks Peter three times, Do you love me more than these? Those who have studied the Bible say that this is to, in a way, heal or to repair Simon Peter's triple denial of Jesus. Three times you denied Jesus, now three times you confess your love. Every day we are asked by the Lord, do you love me? And what do we say? It is our love for Jesus that will make us, like Peter, take care of God's sheep, of God's flock. Expertise helps. Industry helps. But in the end, who will take care of the beloved people of Jesus? Those who love Jesus. If I love Jesus, I will love those whom He loves. Especially the wounded. And after that formation, teaching the disciples to be humble, in being led by Jesus, teaching the disciples to appreciate what Jesus has prepared, but they must bring their own catch. Now, the profession of love. And after the profession of love by Peter, Jesus tells him, you will die the way I died. You will follow me. You will follow me. Yeah. This is the beauty of the resurrection. We are transformed. We are formed again and again by the risen Lord to discipleship, to communion with Him so that we can go out and tell the world of Jesus' triumph over sin and death. But who? Who will do that mission? Only one who is united with Jesus. Only the one who loves Him and is willing to follow Jesus up to the end. So... In the first reading and in the gospel and the second reading, we have two apostles totally transformed. In the first reading, Peter, who used to deny Jesus, now cannot stop speaking, talking about Jesus. And when arrested, they said, Oh, better for us to die than deny Jesus. Ba? Iba na. Ha? Na iba na. And then, in the second reading, John, who had this vision, 
of the uh, victorious Lord. The Lord who deserves all praise, honor, glory, and might forever and ever. A whole life of mission, not for one's gain, but for the adoration of the true Lamb of God. We open ourselves to the formation that the risen Lord offers to us. Wag tayong matakot. Wag tayong matakot. Mukha kayong takot yata ah. <laughs> Let us trust that it is the Lord who will be with us all the time. Truly, it is the Lord. Let us pause. And let us open our hearts to the risen Lord who wants to form us as his humble, loving disciples so that we would have the courage to witness to him to the ends of the earth.